AI and blockchain are the perfect couple in reality because combining it with blockchain, we make it more structured and able to respect really straightforward process as a lawyer, for example, in our situation. So blockchain helped to generate the certificate, helped to transfer the ownership of the IP, helped to manage the money. Hey folks, Flo here with Blockchain North. We're here at Elevate, our very first 2024. I'm here with Sam Dracy, my good friend from Montreal with RTZU and Bip Quantum and Web3 Montreal and ICB. You can maybe not see the logo, but uh, he's definitely involved. Sam, why don't you give us your elevator pitch? What is your 30 seconds? Who are you? What do you do? Why does it matter? Sure, 30 seconds. Okay, it's challenging. Yeah, I know. Okay, so my name is Sam. I'm uh, a co-founder of uh, RTZU. My focus is how to disrupt the way how we interact with intellectual property, right? Uh, IP is a $6 trillion revenue in US only in 2023, last year. So mm. why it's only GAFA using intellectual property as an elevator? My ambition is to disrupt the way with IP and make everyone around the world able to use a solution blockchain-based to generate proof of ownership and raise money with it. So GAFAM, for those who don't know, because I feel it's maybe more of a European expression. We don't hear it so much in North America. Yeah, that's true. It's basically the big tech companies, Google, Amazon, Facebook, uh, Alphabet, etc. Sure. Uh, we know those companies. Um, what inspired you initially to start your own company? It's quite the journey. It's not easy. Uh, sure. And you've been a serial entrepreneur, but with RTU specifically, what was kind of the thing that made you say, yes. okay, let's go? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I co-created 12 companies, actually. I sold a what? couple of them. I lost some of them also, but we learned a lot. Um, what motivates me a lot is, number one, if tomorrow I die, what will be my legacy as a nano-human being in this world? And uh, I think giving back, giving away as a GNU generation, which is the open source generation for people that didn't know them, able to turn my, our first technology 100% free, this is the first pack. This is my first ambition, to impact intellectual property. The second thing is to give the ability to give back our right for our intellectual property creation, you know, our brain juices, if I can say that. Mm -hmm. Because anything you create now, you are sharing with a social media platform, which here is not your owner. You don't own it, for sure. However, having the, the way to use that as your own ownership, like as your own IP, and be able to give back and use it as an elevator, that's my... Uh, that's my uh, target today. Yeah, yeah. In content marketing, they say that you should always prioritize the platforms that you own, like your website, your newsletter, uh, perhaps other things like events that you might organize. True. Uh, instead of only relying on the Googles, the Twitters, etc., who indeed, you know, disown you basically, right? True. Uh, yeah. And, I mean, yeah, that's just I think the reality. So, so you focused on protecting creators and their IP using blockchain and AI. Yes. What are the specific problems that they encounter? Because I feel maybe a lot of them don't even realize it. That's true. IP is really, really intimidating for a lot of people. So with RTZU... And a little bit boring. <laughs> yes, a little bit boring. <laughs> I agree. I'm not a lawyer, by the way. And I work with lawyers since seven years now. We invest seven years research and development. And realize something. Protecting IP is not enough. People struggle to describe... double. First of all, they need to know what is IP about. There is a difference between copyright and patenting. Okay. Copyright is automatically your ownership. Like if you create a text, an image, you are automatically the owner of this. Automatically. But automatically. You need to register, sign up. Uh, That's what they said. But okay. in reality, how to prove it? Yeah. In the past, people sent directly to them a pre-order pre postal letter. You know, to say, okay, this is, I sent it to myself, the letter to prove my ownership. But it's, yeah. not, it's not usable at all. Yeah. That's what we are resolving with blockchain. The second point is how to describe IP and how to use IP. To use IP, you need licensing. What we name license, for example, for software as a SaaS, software as a service, GameFi for gamification, meta use for metaverse, physical, virtual reproduction. So with the second version we're pushing soon, we'll be able to give any kind of license for any kind of IP, algorithm, design, scientific formula, anything. And this is really a big revolution today. And AI here, came to help generating uh, a plagiarism detection and similarity validation, exactly as parenting. And the third level of our project is Beep Cantum. That's okay. why I'm here with ICP. Beep Cantum resolved the problem to education and consultation. An IP lawyer, do you know how much it costs an hour? A lot. 
Yes. Hundreds, if not thousands. <laughs> 400 to 475 dollar in North America. Okay. So resolving this problem, I know we'll have a lot of enemies saying that, but I assume it. We are resolving the problem of consultation. Our AI bot is trained on U.S. copyright as a proof of data, which means there is no hallucination. It can answer any question related to IP without any problem, give you the legal advice. But of course, we need always validation today. I'm, de I'm saying that because this is law. And finally, helping you to list and sell your IP as an asset. So I understand Artesia uses blockchain to offer time-stamped proof of ownership. I'm having to read this one for digital creation. Yes. Can you explain how it actually works in practice and its advantages over traditional methods? Good question, absolutely. Um, so the, to prove of ownership, you need a timestamp. A timestamp is exactly like notary action. So a notary, what we have in Quebec, here in the US it's a, it's a lawyer, going to generate uh, a timestamp. For example, Florian is the owner of this algorithm, this invention, this day, this hour, this minute, this second, right? And the, the power of blockchain is we are able to generate this proof of ownership. We take the data, we crypt it, we mint it in the in blockchain, and we integrate it to the blockchain. And you can verify it 24-7, right. right, with Any a public key. blockchain, by the way? We start with Bitcoin step in the, be in the beginning. It was really hard. Yeah. We evolved to, uh, uh, to Ethereum, Polygon. Now we're pushing on ICP, Polkadot, Algorand. Our ambition is to be cross-chain infrastructure for the next two years. Do you have your own token? We launched a beta token two years ago in PancakeSwap. Okay. <laughs> I said beta token because there is love behind that. Um, and uh, yes, we have the ambition to launch a token with ICP during a DAO, uh, probably next three months. Uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted. Yeah, that. I was going to ask how can people interact with your project because I mean, blockchain is inherently collaborative. Yes. Tech is as well. Yes. Um, yeah. Would you have a, do you have a message for any particular stakeholder group around you, be it investors, partners, people sure. who, users, etc.? Yes, absolutely. So with Beep Cantum, we finished uh, already the MVP. So this week is fresh. So we're looking for Congrats. beta testing. We are looking for user and we're looking for, of course, uh, pre-seed and angel investors because uh, the project needs a minimum funds to go on acceleration. Thankfully, with Cantum Leap Lab, uh, we have the support to access to certain investor. By the way, I'm, I, I advise any tech startup to explore what ICP and Cantum Leap Lab are doing. Without an advertisement, it's, it's no bullshit here because they give you real support, uh, human to human. They have a lot of grants as well? They have a lot of grants from 5, 25, 50 to 100K. The grants are pretty accessible. Of course, there is a requirement behind that. You need to, to, to know what you're talking about. You know your shit, excuse my language. Yeah. And uh, finally, uh, the good thing is you have access to investment with them, which is great. I'm curious about the, now this is a bit more sort of esoteric, let's say, but the use of AI to protect creators' creations, basically, and their IP. Because notionally, I think most people think of AI as a threat to True. creators, right? True. In terms of easy deep fake copy etc you know uh, repurposing of content through things like chat gpt yes how can ai be used as a defense mechanism i guess there we go yeah ai is our friend right of course there is always danger and there is dark side about that we use ai in two sides you, you want to say something no i'm listening okay. to you we use ai on two sides <laughs> the first side is uh, validation yeah so we scrub the web uh to see if there is any similarity yeah. exactly as parenting right to see if there is any image similar or text similar to your invention before generating your certificate. Okay. The second way where AI is really helpful here is in a consultation. When you give to the AI a proof of data, which is like a Bible, as a US copyright, for example, in our case with Beep Canton, and you ask her any question related to IP, it's able to answer as maybe better than human. I'm sorry to say that. With efficiency, giving you the, the, the article, giving you the, 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 the step to follow, to be able to generate a pre-patent, a copyright, or anything else. Wow. So it's two sides, protection, validation, and consultation. Right, and then blockchain, I mean, it seems like a natural pair with AI when it comes to you know, time stamping like you were talking about earlier. Exactly. What do you see as the, the potential for AI and blockchain together? How do you describe it for those who consider those two very different industries that actually they're meant to, they're, they're like yes. a, a match made in heaven. Yes, so AI and blockchain are the perfect couple in reality because blockchain puts certain uh, structure to the AI to respect using the smart contract, certain flow. Because AI without the blockchain, of course, is always functional. Uh, artificial intelligence is not intelligence as we think because it's a simple algorithm executing certain rules. Combining it with blockchain, we make it more structured and able to respect really straightforward process as a lawyer, for example, in our situation. 
So blockchain helped to generate the certificate, helped to transfer the ownership of the IP, helped to manage the money, because if you sell your IP or a fraction of your IP, blockchain is the right way today, is an evidence, to give you, for example, let's, let's take an example. Yeah. You are selling 20% of your IP to raise $200,000, be able to go to the market, yeah. right? So I invest in your 20% of your IP, which means with the blockchain, I have a smart contract saying, I'm the owner of the 20%, you get the money in, mm -hmm. in, in exchange, and the day when you sell or you succeed, I will get my money back. Mm -hmm. It's like an, a crowdfunding investment, right? Yeah. So here where the evidence, here where we're going in reality for the next year. Wow, I love that, uh, that conviction. Yes, now, sir. talking a bit more broadly about entrepreneurship, uh, you said you founded or, or created uh, 12 companies already. Yes, I'm sir. sure you've seen some successes, you've seen some failures. And yes. You say failures seem to be like a, a badge of honor in the startup world. Yes. Um, looking back on this journey, like what, do you, what would you tell people who are starting on their journey right now? Like what are maybe your, your top three sort of lessons? Wow. In a minute. In a minute. Don't, don't be scared about mistakes. Mistakes are the key. Secondly, guys, think about your mental health. Okay, I had two burnout in my life, two burnout. Uh, the second one with a, a panic attack, I was thinking I was gonna die. But the good thing is a wake up call. So work on yourself, take time for yourself, um, and exclusively try to take distance with a lot of things. Like uh, entrepreneurship is really requiring, requiring a lot of self control. Um, Financial management is the second advice, right? So mental health, financial um, management, every penny count here. So focus in the minimum viable product, mm -hmm. which is the most important. All of us, we have a lot of idea, right? So take the fraction of your idea, focus on a niche, and go move forward. And the third advice, don't wait for venture capitals. With all my respect, no one's going to invest your project if you don't have any traction. So find the idea to build the community, grow, and prove the, the utility of your project. I think, I think, they, were, I think they were five. Don't be <laughs> afraid of making mistakes. Oh, yeah, you're Mental right. Mental health, finance. <laughs> yes. Uh, go to investors. Don't be afraid to exactly. you know, and, yes. and focus on your MVP. Yes. Um, Mental health. I think that's such an important point. And it's Shit, so rare yeah, that a tech entrepreneur brings up without me specifically, you know, prompting you to talk about mental health. What do you do to stay sane? Like, oh, wow. And what differences have you, have you seen in your personal life since you changed your... I guess your habits. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs will recognize what I'm saying. First of all, it cost me my marriage, so I had uh, oh, I divorced, but no, no regret, of course. I learned to, I, I realized something like, we are running up after the business, building, and we, we forget ourselves. So what I learned to do is to love myself because I was hating myself, focusing only on results. I realized in the human side, we forget we are a human being. And ego is the... I, I survey my language today. Ego is the first enemy we have. Okay. So we need to put the ego in the side. And I start doing some uh, retreat, men retreat. I start exploring some like shamanic. Like meditation? Or? Uh, men retreat is a three-month program, men only, oh, having cool certain, like certain uh, like exercises to do, working okay. in your life, in your perspective. Uh, I start uh, reading a lot of books. It's like going to the pub every Thursday night. That, 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 that doesn't count. Right? This is another one. That's another kind of retreat. <laughs> but like meditation, uh, br uh, like breath work, uh, gym, gym, gym. Wor sport, sport is the key. Workout, guys, every day if you can. It's super important. And meditation, of course, and visualization. Um, and some personally, some shamanic uh, ritual. Wow. Yeah, I explore, I explore um, like um, ancestral medicine, okay. and I learn a lot from that. Well, we'll talk about that a little bit more in, a, in the next interview. But I did my meditation this morning and I went Good to the gym. You, so uh, thank you. Now, now I know I'm a little bit on track. Sounds in good. 30 seconds or less, what do you tell people who are new to the blockchain space or who are curious about it? Um, how, how is it going to change their lives? Because I feel like a lot of people look at it and think, yeah, it doesn't change anything for me in my in my day to day life. So in 30 yes. seconds, what do you tell people around you, uh, you know, who may think like, why are you even in that space? Sounds good. Okay. So blockchain is a revolution. Uh, and according to Dries Abercan, I'm a big fan of this gentleman, revolution starts in three levels. First level, everyone say, is never going to work. And that's what we hear, right? Last year, three years ago, three years ago, since 2018, right? After that, everyone says it's dangerous. We are on the second stage now. Be careful, there is scammers, there is this, there is that. And we're almost at the advanced stage of that, right? I feel a like we're bit close to that third stage. No? I hope so, yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think we are there. And the third stage is an evidence. So blockchain today is, we can take an example of bank. 
okay? Bank are gonna hate that again. <laughs> so the bank is the third party managing your credit and your debit. Imagine this book is multiply one plus infinite, okay. and your data is scripted and repeated in every block. So instead of human managing the data, is a code, an algorithm managing that, which means it's safe, secure, and corruptible. So this is a revolution, guys. Yeah. You don't need a third party. Banking, insurance, anything can be replaced with blockchain or... Government? Government also, yes. At least some of their services, right? But for example, we can take an example of um, Cadaster, which is like the ownership, uh, real estate ownership. In right. Africa, there is crazy beautiful use cases for that. They don't have any canisters, so which means if you own a house from your grand, grand grandfather, you have no proof for that, wow. and someone can kick you off. So they resolve the problem using blockchain in, uh, in different country in Africa. Yeah. That's amazing. It's always interesting to hear about like emerging markets are often the first adopters yes. because maybe they're exposed to the biggest problems. I mean, yes, I that yes, that's sense. true. Final question for you, uh, Sam. Um, you've already kind of shared some of your predictions, but I want to ask you one more time in, uh, again, 30 seconds or less. As sure. someone who's been in the space for, as far as I can tell, at least over a decade, um, what are your surest predictions about blockchain for the coming two years? What are you absolutely sure is going to happen within, let's say, the next, you know, one and a half, two years? You know, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, the first thing, unfortunately, which is really challenging, if our North American government keep going with this restriction and without taking into consideration the importance of the blockchain ecosystem in North America, we are keep losing some of the biggest player and genius in North America. That's oh, what happened. Especially true in Canada, I guess. Ex especially in Canada. This is the first thing. It's not only blockchain and crypto also, right? The second point, um, like we, we can see crazy beautiful use cases in China and other countries where they use blockchain as as legal and, and, uh, and legal proof and base proof. So I'm pretty confident AI with blockchain will be more and more used uh, in the next two years. So uh, sky's the limit here. I asked sky's for one limit. and I got two. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> there we go. Thank you very much, Sam. It's My been pleasure. a pleasure speaking with you. My Thank pleasure. You.